Hello and welcome to another edition of Altoff on Illinois. I am State Senator Pamela Altoff and I represent the 32nd District which covers most of McHenry County except a very small portion in the southeastern quadrant and I exchange that in uh, during redistricting for a northwestern slice of Lake County. So again, we're very happy to have you with us today. I have a very wonderful special edition. I have with me today the Capital Architect, Richard Alsop. He is going to give us a rundown on all of the wonderful renovations that were done to the State Capitol. Um, if you do not know, the State Capitol was actually started construction in 1868. It took 20 years Correct. for the um, building to be completed. We ran into some financial difficulties because of the Civil War. Well, we ran into some difficulties with running out of money uh, with the architect, right? So government, rem government remains the same. Yes. You ran out of money. There Correct. was no money appropriated. But there was a recent um, renovation. And we started in the south wing, but we really did the massive renovations in the west wing. So we thought today for your enjoyment, we would run through those renovations, give you a little bit of the history behind the building and how it got started, tell you about the architects, the construction crews, things of that nature. So what I'd like to do is turn it over to you, Richard, and kind of can you explain to us how the renovation started and then how it grew into the larger project and how um, from beginning to end you tried to do everything that was historically accurate so that we could preserve a living history that we could see and touch? Absolutely. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. Um, I'm, I'm always excited to talk about the Capitol building and I, I'm so excited that you're also uh, a preservationist at heart and, mm -hmm. and you take these uh, topics seriously. So, um, yes, the, the uh, Illinois State Capitol um, had reached a point where all of the uh, infrastructure systems were failing, um, mechanically, electrically, uh, plumbing. So in uh, 2006, uh, there was a push to renovate the south wing of the Capitol building. Um, the scope of that work was just a mechanical renovation. Uh, the plan was to have the building still occupied with employees while they did the renovation. So uh, that led to, um, of course, conflict between employee and contractor. Um, and it led to um, what we know today was probably a, a misfire in terms of the scope that should have happened for that wing. So when we moved to the West Wing, which is when my tenure started, mm -hmm. um, we decided at that point that we should close the entire wing down, move everyone out of the wing and accommodate them in other places on the complex, um, but really uh, do that wing justice. And what I mean by that is, is uh, completely uh, installing a new mechanical system, uh, new electricals, uh, new plumbing, new life safety, uh, upgraded accessibility. So these are things that, that the building itself uh, lacked, but we're trying to do those renovations one wing at a time. And sort of in concert with all those um, necessary renovations, we did what we call a peer and significance renovation, right? So we brought the building back to what the original architect's vision for the building was. And so when you walk into the building today, it's as close as we can reasonably get to what it would have been when they opened the doors in the 1880s. And it is an absolutely magnificent renovation. I give you all kind of accolades. And from an environmental perspective, did you not win a LEEDS award as, as well? Correct. The, the, the goal for any building design in the state is that it be designed to lead silver. Um, we don't have the same, um, we, it's, we're not required to go through the commissioning process to verify that it, it, it meets the LEED design. Uh, but the goal for our project, because it was the state capital, we wanted to make it an example of how you could take a, an existing structure, which is the greenest structure of all, right, is the one that's already built, right. and, and apply those sustainability principles to it. So we, we exceeded LEED Silver and, and obtained LEED Gold uh, for that building, and that's a first for state capitals in one of the oldest um, historic buildings to achieve LEED in the nation. That's unbelievable. Yes. And in history speaking, I understand this is the sixth capital building that Illinois has utilized. Um, obviously the last, we don't have a new one planned for. Um, I understand it's one of the tallest capitals, in fact being even taller than our U.S. capital in Washington. Right. It's the tallest domed capital in the country, yes. Yeah. But it, it exceeds our U.S. capital by about 72 feet, so it's, it's well above that. Excellent. Yes. All right, so now let's, let's take me through the renovations. Um, if I were to be an individual visiting the governor, visiting the capital mm -hmm. back in 1888, I would have come in not where I currently entered the Capitol, but I would have come in through the second floor entrance that faces north. 
Faces east. Faces east. Yes. I'm not good with directions. Never <laughs> That's have, okay. Okay, so faces east. Yes, absolutely. Um, w when the building was first designed, uh, the original architect, Alfred Pekinard, who actually passed away during the building's construction, uh, he passed away in 1876, um, but he had designed that there would be a set of 87 steps that led from uh, the ground up to the second floor, which he considered the first floor of the building. So when you walked in the building, uh, you would have walked right past a barber shop, and beyond the barber shop was the governor's office. Uh, today, that's still the even though the barber shop is gone, that's still the governor's office. It's now the kitchen. It's now <laughs> right. <laughs> so the the uh, governor's office is actually the only office constitutional office that's still in the same place that it was when the building was built. Oh wow! Um, so you would have walked into the uh, what was his first floor, our current second floor, uh, the governor's office on the right, and looked across to the Grand Stair. Right. Now, of course, the architect's vision for that space uh, was that at the bottom of the Grand Stair would be these two uh, maidens. Um, uh, interesting note that the, the architect for our building is the same architect who designed the Iowa, Iowa State Capitol, which, which I know you know. Um, so, so when those maidens were brought to the, to the building, um, the building commission at the time for Illinois thought that they were too risque, too scantily clad yes. to be put on display in our building. Um, Iowans didn't have the same <laughs> reservation, so, so they took those maidens uh, and installed them in their building. Again, it's the same architect, similar design to mm -hmm. Iowa that we have here. Uh, so now they, they are proudly displayed in, in, their, um, in their Capitol building. Of course, the architect's vision, going back to that period of significance, would have been, those maidens would have been in our Capitol building. So as a part of our renovation um, at, the, at the second floor, we replicated those maidens and put them back in our building. Um, and so I yes. promise you, they're not really too risque. They're, they're, well, by cer certainly by, exactly <laughs> right, exactly right. So, so yes, yeah, so now when you, when you walk into the building at the second floor, uh, or come up the stairs of the elevator to get there, which was the original first floor, you're seeing what, what they would have seen in the 1880s. And obviously it's a very grand staircase with the two maiden statues Correct. on either pillar. And then as you walk up the stairs, you see the large picture. Yep, the large mural of uh, George Rogers Clark, who was the older brother of uh, Lewis and Clark from the Lewis and Clark expedition. Mm -hmm. So his, um, his older brother, I think, was the, the highest ranking official in the western uh, part of the what was then the states or the territory at the time. Um, so there's a, a huge mural of him up there painted by Gustav Fuchs. Um, during the renovation, that entire mural was uh, enclosed. Mm -hmm. It had its own air conditioning system, ventilation. Um, we had heat sensors in there, so we knew exactly what the temperature was at any time and could step in if needed to. And basically that's to protect the paint. Correct. And the, okay. mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, that, that is a priceless piece. It's original to the building painted directly on plaster. So uh, if something were to happen to that, that would be, uh, it would be just, it would Devastating, be Devastating, right, yes. right. So, all right. Directly on plaster. So uh, if something were to happen to that, that would be, uh, it would be just, it would Devastating, be Devastating, right, yes. right. So, all right, so um, that picture though was also, I, I'm gonna use the word renovated, and I know that's not correct, like refurbished. Conserved, so, yes. Right, it was conserved, yeah. all right. Um, so, I now see the picture. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it for the period that we're looking at. Do we want to go downstairs to the first floor and end where my office is in the fully renovated third floor area? Sure, okay. yeah, and, and I would say uh, just below the, uh, where the mural is now, there used to be a set of doors that led to the, to the press, press area, mm -hmm. right? And that was on a, and a mezzanine that was non-original to the building. It was built in the 70s or so, uh, 1970s. And uh, so during our renovation, uh, we thought it important that that mezzanine come out. Mm. Uh, it was only it was only put in there to provide additional space, without really regard to how it affected the space above and below it, and how it looked from the outside. Because you could see the mezzanine running across the windows from the outside. Right. Um, so that didn't match our our goal for the project. So that came out. Um, and we moved them to the basement. That's right. Yeah. And actually, they're in very nice space they in the are. basement. It's mm -hmm. it's all the entire building is masonry construction. So they've got. Uh, nice clean brick walls, uh, brick arches. It's a fabulous space, really. Um, so yes, yeah, so we moved down to the first floor, which at the time was the basement. Um, Picanard passes away. Uh, the, the building commission hires W.W. W. Boynton uh, to convert, really to take Picanard's place. But his, uh, his goal was to take the basement and make it the first floor. So he removed those steps that were on the front of the Capitol building and made the, f the basement the first floor of the Capitol building. So when, when someone comes today uh, and they walk through the, any of the entries, whether it's the west, the north, or the east, and they walk into the building um, th and they head to the west wing, they really are seeing Boynton's influence 
as opposed to Pekinard's influence. And wasn't there some renovations done to room 122 uh, on that level? Yes, 118 and 122 were both renovated, yes. In fact, the 122 space um, used to be, when the building first opened, the uh, personal chambers for the uh, Supreme Court justices. So when, of course, when they built their own building across the street, right. they moved there, uh, but it's now, a, it's now a hearing room. Excellent. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I noted when I was doing a little bit of research for this interview that the design of the Capitol is a Latin cross. cross mm -hmm. And so and they said that it was um, placed to meet the directional of a, of a compass as, right. as well. Yeah, it okay. runs true north, south, east, west. Excellent. Yes. So a li little bit more uh, you know, <laughs> history. And um, Picanard was also, when he passed away, buried in the same cemetery as President Lincoln. Yes? No? That's right, yes. Yeah, so, exactly you know, right. a little and, bit and of... And I've been past his, uh, his grave site. It, it actually could use a little bit of work. It's beginning to deteriorate and show some, uh, show some age. So, um, yeah, that's a, maybe a preservation project for another time and another group. Again, living, living history Absolutely. is extraordinarily yes. important. Um, we've only got about a minute before we take a break. So um, take me from the first floor and start... Um, kind of laying out what happens on the third floor, which is where both the House and the Senate um, are housed. That's exactly where the chambers are located on that third floor. Um, we also have then all of the Senate majority leaders as well as the Republican leaders um, on that third floor and in that wing. So Correct. can you kind of get your head and set me up for that Yes, real absolutely. So um, the, the House and Senate chambers were, were both renovated uh, in close proximity to the South Wing. So um, th those are period restorations as well. We try to get back to the same period of significance for those spaces. Um, in the West Wing, of course, moving into the space where you have your office, uh, you walk in, in those, those sets of double doors, and that would have originally been the State Museum. All right, so let's leave our audience there for a moment, okay. and there we walk in. And what I would like to do is you're going to have a little break now, and we'll come back and really hear the, about the renovations in the West Wing on the third floor. Please act responsibly. Don't clown around with our natural resources. Welcome back to Altoff on Illinois. We have with us today Richard Alsup, who is the Capitol Architect. He undertook the renovations in the West Wing. Um, we've been talking a little bit about the renovations on the second and first floor. We now are actually walking into the third floor and the doors that open up into 309. Correct. And what do we see? So what, what we see today um, is very reminiscent of uh, when that space was the State Library. So originally when the building up, and, and actually Pekinard had always envisioned that space as the State Library, but when the building first opened, its, its initial use was the State Museum, um, which of course became the Illinois State Museum. Um, but when the museum left, the, the library moved in, and that's when all the ornate ceiling work took place. That's when columns uh, to support the book stacks were added on the mm -hmm. first floor. They transferred the load all the way down to the first floor, down into the basement. Um, and so what you see now so this was not the first renovation of the Capitol. It was right, <laughs> correct. <laughs> there correct. were several. The, okay. Yes, and and over time, those those renovations have become uh, increasingly um, s just solving an immediate need, as opposed to a preservation strategy, which is what we employed here. Um, but yes, so you walk into that space, and it uh, it it feels it feels very authentic, it feels very original, and that's because it is. And one of the steps we did to help save money in, in that part of the building. Uh, was instead of doing all the hand painting directly on the plaster ceiling itself, um, the, the group out of Chicago we worked with uh, painted it all on canvas and hung it like, uh, like wallpaper would. Uh, you told me that when we were walking through when the renovations were still ongoing close to the end, that fascinated me because yes. you would not be able to tell that you, you by tell. standing and looking exactly up and looking right. at all that artwork. And, and the benefit it has for, for the state is that if there's ever a need to go back and repair uh, the ceiling for any reason. We have a leak in the attic or something like that. Uh, we just sweat the, the canvas off, we make the repair and then put it back and, and no one knows the difference. 
So. Okay, great. And then um, tell me too a little bit about the mezzanine that is is located in there mm -hmm. that you did sort of as an homage to the library. Sure. And then also about the colors that um, were used throughout the renovation um, and that are particularly visible in that third uh, floor space that we're in in section 309. Right. So right, you're exactly right about why we insert. You know, we took a mezzanine out of uh, between two and three, but we put a, uh, a loft mezzanine in, in your space. And the reason for that is because it was the state library. And when it had the state library with the book stacks, it had several mezzanine levels in that space. So we felt justified in our, uh, in our response to how we approached that, and that's putting a mezzanine back in that space there. Um, it, gives, it gives additional office space in that, in right. that 309 room, right. um, but it has, it has a, a reason why we, we made that move. Uh, in terms of the colors, uh, it's it's fascinating the, to watch the uh, uh, the skilled artisans go through and, and peel back layer upon layer of paint to get to the original um, um, stencil that was there. Uh, they do all kinds of mic microscopy where they look under a microscope to determine the the exact color. I re again, yes. when, when we were in the building, I remember going by and they had the little lights on top of their heads yes. and we're sitting there, I mean, small little just moment. Just scalpels, yeah, really, exactly. just try, trying to get, you know, trying to do as little damage as they can, but at the same time, give them the information they need to replicate these, these vivid colors um, on canvas. Right. It was absolutely gorgeous. Yeah. Um, and I have the wonderful honor and privilege of having one of those offices up on the mezzanine, um, smaller than my office was on the other mezzanine, but certainly much more beautiful and lovely right. and gives you the absolute knowledge that you're in that building for something serious. That's exactly you, it, right. it really does. Right. So, um, Also, as, as we do that, tell me a little bit about now what we consider the basement, the entrance into the tunnel that mm -hmm. connects us to the Hullet in the Stratton building. Um, there were numerous conversations because of those arches and pictures that people saw thereafter with horses down in that area that they thought that's where the coaches and the little horses were stabled. A any, any truth to that? We, we, we've seen no evidence um, other than perhaps a photograph of them running by the outside that, that the basement was used for, uh, for stabling of horses. Um, the, the arches would really be too low to accommodate what we would consider a modern horse. Um, the, the reason we're seeing these, uh, these arches is that brick really works well in an arch. Uh, the, the compression of, of the brick, um, the way the structure works, it, it works better in an arch Gives than going straight two. across. Yeah. Um, it's, it's very strong in that way. So uh, because this is a masonry building, um, arches were the best solution to, to bridge spans. And talking about that, most of the materials were used from the Springfield area? For from Illinois, for sure, yes. Yeah. Uh, we had limestone come out of Joliet. Uh, some limestone came out of Indiana. Um, the marbles that were used in the building really come from all over the world, though. Uh, and that was even in Pekinart's time, that, that the marbles came from uh, Belgium. Uh, some came from Tennessee. Uh, wow. So we were, um, yeah, he, he was very worldly in his use of uh, materials for, for those kinds of things. But the craftsmen were local. Um, a lot of the materials were local. Um, so he made, he made certain... Um, concessions when he when he found something local he couldn't use or we just didn't have the resources here to, to complete his effect he would go somewhere else to get them but that was really more the exception than the rule and the whole idea of renaissance as well which you also see in the Iowa Capitol that's too, right which yeah. is the design um, we, we were talking a little bit earlier um, about uh, funny little stories during the renovation um, there's also uh, some type of um, rumor that they built a large ramp starting from the old railroad station all the way up to the top of the dome. Any, <laughs> any truth to that at all? Well, it's, it's interesting if you ever take a tour of the, of the dome itself, you see these what have to be two and three ton stones um, that are helping support the corbeling mm -hmm. for the dome. And you wonder how they got that up there. Um, I, I haven't uh, seen any evidence of a ramp, uh, but no, using the, the methods of the time, you know, today we would use a modern crane they're using wooden derricks and they're using horses uh, to pull these, these materials into place. They did have a railroad spur that came off into the complex, which they used to at least haul material here. Which surrounded the Capitol at That's the time correct. during the construction. Exactly right. yeah. yeah. All right, so you know, here, here we are. It's absolutely beautiful. I cannot um, not ask this question because everybody is going to criticize me when I go back home. Tell me the story about the seven hundred and fifty thousand dollar doors. Yes, so so copper is a material that's known for its longevity. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a basilica in Florence uh, where the copper doors 
date from the 1400s and they still look fabulous. Um, it's all about how you take care of them. So when we designed uh, the renovation, we could have put doors that were aluminum frame, uh, glass. They would have been, that would have been a 20 year solution because that, that faces west, gets a lot of wind, gets right. a lot of use. Um, so that's not a long term solution. We could have spent $100,000, 150 on those doors or we could have gone the extra step and say, look, it's, it's a little more cost up front, um, but let's, let's do this solution once. You know, my lifetime, your lifetime, really our children and grandchildren's lifetimes, those are the doors that they'll see, that they'll walk through. Um, so I don't expect to have to do anything with those doors for a couple of hundred years. And it, it's a somewhat of an important conversation at this particular point because I do think many times um, the media takes um, latitude with decisions we make with long-term consequences and kind of builds it up into this, oh my goodness, I can't believe you did that. This project took you how long from, be from beginning to end? Right, it was, it was a two-year design process and a two-year construction process. So um, it, it was basically a four-year program. We knew it was going to run us about $50 million. Correct. And this was just one item and one component in a you know, significantly larger budget yes. to ensure we were doing the public safety, we were doing all of the ADA requirements, all of those things we needed to do, infrastructure for computers, cable, things of that nature, Correct. along with making sure that the capital looks as much like it could, exactly reflecting right. back into um, the exactly 1800s. Right. Yeah. And that's, that's an excellent point. In fact, the, uh, uh, the way we bid this project, it, it was awarded to the lowest bidder. So really, we couldn't have gotten this job done for any less money than, than we did. Um, and, and we did get it done within the budget. We, we had allotted for it. So yes, it's a success all around. And again, reading um, my history of the original capital, the sixth capital that was built, um, my understanding is that the original budgeted amount was $3 million. Correct. It ran over to $4.5 million. Yes. And they actually, at the end of the project, returned $5.36. Or maybe treasury. it was $0.63. <laughs> cents. <laughs> right. But yeah, there was exactly money left right. over that they gave back. Yeah, so, so. it cost 50% more than, than they had originally thought. Uh, but I would say at the end of the day, with, uh, with the building that we have and the way we take care of it, there's no reason it shouldn't last, you know, forever. So talk a little bit about future plans. I mean, you've, um, you started this project when you came on board, you know, you know right away you jumped into this right. as the capital architect. It, are there plans? Is there discussion? Um, is there an opportunity to do further renovations? And then I also want to go back and talk a little bit about what we did in both of the Senate and the House chambers um, and trying to make that look as historically accurate as we possibly could. Sure, yeah. It's, it's certainly the goal of our office uh, as, we, as we work towards um, really a master plan vision for the complex to renovate the rest of the building the same way we've done the West Wing. So we, we did a uh, what I would call a partial renovation in the South. We've done a full renovation, which really sets the precedent for how mm -hmm. the other renovations would go in the west. So the, the idea would be that we move forward with the north, the east, um, and then back into the south to finish that renovation uh, the way we've done in the west. Um, so yes, we're looking at a, a multi-year, multi, multi -year, um, perhaps even decade-long process before we're all the way back around that building. And, and obviously doing it correctly with a historic accuracy. We still are doing all of the, again, life safety, bringing our infrastructure up to code. Um, it's an old building. It's over 100 years old. We right. need to ensure its safety. So talk a little bit about um, the carpeting and the desks and all of the other improvements that were made to the individual chambers, particularly in the house. Was there work done to the large dome in, in the house chamber at all? Yes. Yeah, so it, it, has a, it has a lay light in the house chamber. Um, and really, we don't have any any color photographs of what that lay light looked like. So we borrowed really the colors and the pattern from, from Iowa. Again, same architect, mm -hmm. uh, similar design. Uh, in the Senate chamber, uh, you guys have a space that is, is ready to accept a lay light when we move back into that renovation as really? well. Really? So oh, I might have to look. Yeah, th there, was a, there was original lay light in your space. Uh, because there's mechanical equipment above it right now, um, there's no lay light. But when we renovate that wing to replace and update all the mechanical systems, the lay light uh, appropriately should go back in that space. How wonderful yes, is yes. that? It's going to be beautiful. And then we put in um, the roll top desks mm -hmm. so that it looks, again, when you are up in the galleries of either one of the chambers and you look down, it does look very old and um, more 1800 feel to it Correct. as well. Correct, yes, and, and you know, there's wool carpet on the floor and, and that's, that's, uh, that's an original, it's not original carpet, but it's what would have been 
uh, similar to what would have been in place when, when the building opened. True story. Um, I heard that they brought that carpeting, um, again, it looks very similar to the carpeting that was there, but they brought them in um, squares, smaller squares, the, and then the, they were all sewed together? Yes, yeah, so they come in, in very narrow rolls, and, and they are hand-stitched. It's a hand-stitched wool carpet. And, um, I, and, and I will tell you for um, the record, for about a week and a half, we were not allowed to bring anything, any, you know, liquids, right. um, any food, anything. And that only lasted about a week and a half. And then, you know, we, you know, the, sure. the base nature of we have to eat lunch yes. and dinners on the floor yes. kind of took over. Perfect. So Perfect. we are trying to preserve it, though. We are very, Good. very careful with the building. Well, I, you have been a wonderful steward. So, so, but you, um, again, thank you very, very much. We really enjoy the work environment. I cannot even begin to tell you when people walk into the Capitol, the oohs and the ahs. Um, a lot of eighth grade trips, a lot of high school classes come from the surrounding area. They absolutely love this building. So thank you very much for taking the time today to explain all of those renovations, as well as being our office architect. Now, the funny part, um, is your office in the cap in the Capitol anywhere? Do you get to enjoy this? It's is in the Stratton building, but I've, I spend very little time in my office, in my physical office. Most of my time is, of course, spent in that building just because it's so wonderful. But your support yeah. staff doesn't get to enjoy all of the fruits of their labor. Oh, oh, absolutely. We, we all go over as often as we can. Uh, in fact, the, the guy that I work the closest with in my office, uh, my senior project manager, he and I are always doing something in the Capitol building, so we both get to get to enjoy it on a daily basis. Well, I have been spending more time in your office in the Stratton building this session. We actually were negotiating a bill and we had probably 30 stakeholders and the only conference room we had big enough to put us all in was the conference room we had in, in your in office, office space. Perfect. So we appreciate the fact that you allowed us to oh, use that too. Anytime. And you have the best um, replica of the Capital complex yes, um, little sitting as people. Yeah, yes, it's, it's absolutely. absolutely wonderful. Good. So, again, I thank you very, very much for your time today. I certainly hope everyone enjoyed the um, visual uh, architectural um, portions that we were able to show you too about the renovations. And what I would do is encourage you to come on down to Springfield, visit the Capitol, certainly stop in and experience government. Uh, thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you in another edition.